Okay, I admit it, I have a problem. Or at least I had a problem. It all started back in Season 3. Wormhusk Arc Striders were all the rage back then. You could get into a fight, take a few shots, then dodge away to instantly heal back up to full health while being nearly unkillable thanks to some wild damage resistance. Then it happened. Bungie nerfed Wormhusk. The go-to option for every fellow hunter crutch out there was no longer the most OP thing in the game. How else was I going to climb up the competitive ranks in Season 4 and get my Not Forgotten? I was set on a mission to try some new things and find an exotic that fit me. Dragon Shadow was an instant new friend. Getting quick draw for free on every weapon kill just by dodging paired with better movement speed and an automatic reload was a hard thing to pass up. We spent many gaming sessions together while exploiting the near instantaneous swap speed between my hand cannon and my shotgun. Of course, there was the classic knucklehead radar. This one let me keep my radar on screen at any time, even with a sniper rifle. It was a dream exotic for hard scoping down a lane for minutes at a time with no fears of being flanked. Our old friends the Frosties from Destiny 1 were also a fun choice to get your abilities back really fast. I mean, who doesn't love spamming grenades every few seconds? In a similar way, Shinobu's Vow made skip grenades really attractive. But then one exotic pair of boots seemed to fit just right. Stompies had been recently buffed to work with all three of the hunter jumps instead of just the high jump. This meant I could combine my favorite aerial jump option, the strafe jump, with even more springy power. These boots felt like a perfect match. They were reminiscent of Bones of Ao, which were some of my favorite options back in Destiny 1. Beyond making it easy to cheese encounters like in Crota's End, the extra jump they offered in PvP made confusing the crap out of your opponents at Cakewalk. Most of the time, they had just no idea how to deal with such aerial acrobatics. What the Stompies missed in that extra jump, they made up for in Velocity. If you timed your jump just right, you could springboard into the ceiling to catapult yourself forward with incredible speed. This made maps like Burnout a Stompy Hunter's playground. With just a few simple hops, you can move from the inside altar area all the way out to the outside yard in the blink of an eye. Not only that, but these magical boots increased your sprint speed to let you zoom around the map on the ground, and maybe most importantly, they gave you incredible slide distance. No joke, I got multiple accusations back in the day from people 100% sure that somehow I was cheating with how far I could slide and still pepper them with my shotgun. This was back in the era before Stompies were all that popular and this kind of movement seemed like sorcery. But before long, these boots became public enemy number one in the Crucible. They were able to dodge the heat for a long time by hiding behind outliers added to the game that were obviously ridiculous. We had gloves that could instantly give you back a full blade barrage, a chest piece that allowed you to enjoy a Spectral Blades activation for an entire afternoon. During the chilly days of stasis, the Mask of Bakris took all the heat from its ability to literally teleport you from point A to point B before an enemy had any clue that you were coming. But before long, all of that hate was directed towards my favorite pair of springy boots. They're OP, everyone said. There's no downsides, no reason to run any other exotic. The sheer velocity of the jump over an enemy's head left no chance to peg that thumbstick fast enough to turn around and counter them. Aiming up at the sky is definitely harder than aiming at the ground, and the Destiny community let every hunter main know it. And finally, after many months of anti stompies propaganda, the nerf hammer finally landed a crushing blow. Aerial Effectiveness these words still make diehard Crucible players shiver in fear. After all, a hunter's favorite environment is the airspace directly above their prey. And with one major patch, this playstyle had been nuked. Your plans for landing shots while airborne had been cancelled. But I had different plans. You see, while all of this anti stompies hate had been spewing, I had a crush developing on a new hunter exotic. Glove is so powerful that with a single grenade throw, you could wipe an entire team. I even made a video about how much fun this build was to play, but it didn't seem like it was getting much attention. I had a lot of fun chucking trip mines with as much health as my allies for a while, but soon enough, I forgot about my new friends and went back to my comfy boots. With the addition of Void 3.0, invisibility immediately became a hot option for the hunters. And I concede, I may have indulged in the guilty pleasure. Three lives left. You can't blame me. Night Stalker is the only class with access to radar manipulation, and it was just too much fun to confuse my opponents. Omni Oculus with its damage resistance was also incredibly busted. The combination of damage resist along with the invisibility enabled you to easily ambush your opponents with Lord of Wolves for an easy pick. Though that was a bit too disgusting for me. I just couldn't get myself to use it. Was I throwing? Well, maybe. And frankly, during this period, I just stuck with the Stompies. They were too good to pass up. The speed and the springiness were just so satisfying to me. On May 24th, 2022 though, everything changed. Bungie had released Season 17 along with Solar 3.0 and I was searching for some new options. There was a new effect called Radiant that gave you a damage bonus. This was just enough damage to two-tap with Ace of Spades in Memento Mori. Even better for hunters, they could proc this Radiant effect with just a simple dodge. 
Many people were trying to sell me on this playstyle. They'd say, Patty, go run Frosties. Ace with Mori is broken now. I honestly doubt that. Ace was always broken, but I digress. This playstyle was powerful without question, but I wanted something with a bit more style. Atheris' Embrace was a no attempting option, and it's really, really good, I gotta give it that. With Solar 3.0, you could even get your knife back instantly on a body shot kill, but somehow poking my enemy to death just wasn't that entertaining to me. It was still lacking the oomph that I was desperately looking for. I needed something big, something grand, something flashy. How did that... Oh, that up. Oh, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> my old friends, the young Ahamkara Spine, had been collecting dust ever since I made that video showcasing them several months ago. They were always a good pick, certainly at least A tier on a hunter tier list in terms of potential. I know, I know, tier lists again, but they've kind of become my specialty. Anyway, Solar 3.0 brought a whole new source of power to these amazing gloves. It wasn't obvious at first, but the main buff that these things got was the fact that now our explosive proximity knives could be instantly refunded anytime we got a kill with them. This didn't seem like a big deal initially, but then I remembered that any source of solar ability damage would provide grenade energy back towards my next trip mine. All that remained was to decorate my hunter with maximum 100 discipline, double grenade kickstart mods with double bomber mods for maximum cooldowns, and the best shader in the game for every weapon. And, most importantly, the sweaty no cape look. Just kidding, I like my capes. With this totally fair and balanced amount of cooldown boost, I was ready to drop another crucible and unleash the ungodly powers of this trip mine wombo combo. It's a crazy combination of events, and if you play your cards right, you can have a grenade ready for almost any situation. Oh look, there's a wall conveniently close to my opponents. Wouldn't it be a shame if they somehow exploded behind it? No line of sight? Hmm, no problem. Oh no, my opponents are rushing me. Whatever shall I do? Here's another one. This guy thought he was smart. He ran behind cover and wouldn't peek me. Well, nothing these gloves can't handle. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> the knife nade combo is pretty effective against supers too. It saved me so many times from certain death. At some point, it almost feels like the nades are playing the game for you. All you gotta do is press melee, press grenade, and then sit back and relax. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, these things are so good. And in fact, it's like having a whole extra player on your team with the incredible health pool. Sometimes I'd throw one just to watch people shoot at them and then jump down and snipe them whenever they run out of ammo. He's trying to kill my third thing. <laughs> this power isn't restricted only to PvP either. These things are just amazing at dishing out some huge AoE damage in PvE if you know how to throw them. It kind of feels like these gloves are made for me. With Arc 3.0 and the removal of Classy Restoration, I tried to explore some other options on my Hunter. I strayed far away into the Arc Strider Blink play style, even going so far as to re-equip my Nerf Stompies. I also went back to playing Void for that incredibly broken invis. But then, in a fateful game of trials, I got a nasty warning not to go off course. It's nice to go out on a subclass exploring adventure, but just like any journey, this one had to return home to the one thing that just felt right. After all of my running around and experimentation, it's great to be back with my favorite pair of gloves.